guys, so we are group, group 3 and, and we are here uh, to give you some tips and tutorial about basic calculus. Wait, you're blocking me, I can't see the camera. Oh, sorry bro. <laughs> so enjoy watching guys. If f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a unique number and as x approaches to zero from either side, then the limit of f of x as x approaches to c is l. This is written as limit of f of x is equals to l as x approaches to c. This is our first example. We are going to find the problem, these three problems here. First, the limit of f of x as x approaches to 4 from the left. If there is a negative sign here at above the number, it's from the left. If we have the positive sign, it's from the right. Since we are finding from the left, because it is given here that it's from the left, we have an arrow here that is pointing from the left. It is located at the number 2 at the y-axis and 4 from the x-axis. So our answer here is, since it's from the left, it's 2. Then, our next problem is from the right, it's still, it's still the same. Since from the right, it's from here, going here. So it's still number two. But if we have the same answers here in this given, then it is the same answer as here. If we have the same answer here, then automa automatically that will be our, our answer here. So if we have them, if our first answer here is three, then our answer here is does not exist but we have this but our answer here is 2 so our answer here it would be also 2 this is our next example we are going to find the limit of f of x as x approaches to negative 5 from the left and this first problem will serve as our left hand limit. Our right hand limit is limit of f of x as x approaches to negative 5 from the right. And our two hand limit is limit of f of x as x approaches to negative 5. If the left at our left hand limit and right hand limit has different answers then automatically our answer here from two hand limit is does not exist. Now let's find the answers of this problem. Since it is from the left, we're going to find an arrow that is pointing from the left. So this is this is the point that is pointing from the left. Since it has it, its point here is hollow, automatically our answer here is undefined. Now we'll move on for the second problem. Our second problem is negative 5 from the right. So we're going to find a point that has an arrow that is pointing from the right. So this is, this is the arrow that is pointing from the right. It, it says here that it's in number 4 from our y-axis. So it has, and it has solid points. So automatically our answer is 4. Since it has different answers, then our answer here from our two-hand limit is does not exist. Our next example is this. So our first problem is limit of f of x as x approaches to 5 from the left. Now, we're going to find a, a point that has an arrow that is pointing from the left. So we have here a hollow point that is that has an arrow that is pointing from the left. So we're going this and we're going to use this as our basis. So as what I've said earlier, if we have an hollow point, hollow point then we are going automatically the answer of this graph is undefined it's undefined our right hand limit is limit of f of x as approaches to 5 from the right so our answer here is negative 4 because it says here that this point is solid and it is facing right so our answer here is Four. We have our left hand is undefined and our right hand is negative four. It is not the same, so automatically our answer here from our two hand limit is does not exist. So we have here the limit theorems. So the first theorem is limit of a constant. 
So the limit of its constant is limit of C as X approaches to A is equal to C. So we have here the examples. So limit of 5 as X approaches to 0 is equal to 5. Then the second example is limit of 9 as X approaches to 0 is also equals to 9. Then the third one, limit of 17 is as X approaches to 5 is equal to 17. Then the second theorem is the limit of the identity function. So limit of X as X approaches to A is equal to A. So here are the examples. So first example, limit of X as X approaches to 15 is equal to 15. And then the second one, limit of X as X approaches to 7 is equal to 7. Then the third one, limit of X as X approaches to 20 is equal to 20. So we have here the third theorem of limit which is limit of a constant multiple. So limit of C f of x as x approaches to a is equal to C limit of f of x as x approaches to a. So here, here are the examples. First is limit of 5x as x approaches to 3 is equal to 5 times limit of x as x approaches to 3. So the next one is 5 times 3 is equal to 15. So this is our final answer. And the second one, limit of 3x as x approaches to 10 is equal to 3 times limit of x as x approaches to 10. So 3 times 10 here is equals to 30. So this is our last so this is our final answer. So our third example is limit of 7 as x approaches to 8. So is equal to 7 times limit of x as x approaches to 8. So we have here 7 times 8. Then the answer of that is 56. So the fourth theorem is limit of the sum and difference. So if limit f of x as x approaches to a is equal to l and limit of g of x as x approaches to a is equal to m then limit of f of x plus or minus g of x as x approaches to a is equal to l plus or minus m so this is the first example of limit of the sum and difference so limit of quantity 6x plus 4 is equal to limit of 6x as x approaches to 3 plus limit of 4 as x approaches to 3. So 6 times limit of x as x approaches to 3 plus limit of 4 which is 4. After that 6 times 3 plus 4. 6 times 3 is equal to 18 plus 4. 18 plus 4 is equal to 22. So the final answer is 22. So this is the second example. Limit quantity of 2x minus 10 as x approaches to 5 is equal to limit 2x as x approaches to 5 minus limit of 10 as x approaches to 5. So 2 times limit of x as x approaches to 5 minus 10. So 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Bring down the negative 10. So 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. So the third example is limit of quantity of 9x plus 2 as x approaches to 8. So limit of 9x as x approaches to 8 plus limit of 2 as x approaches to 8. So 9 times limit of x plus 2 as x approaches to 8. So 9 times 8 is equal to 72 plus 2 is equal to 74. The final answer is 74. 24. So our fifth theorem is the limit of the product. So if limit f of x as x approaches to a is equal to l and limit of g of x as x approaches to a is equal to m, then limit of the quantity f of x times g of x as x approaches to a is equal to l times m. 
So, here are the examples. So, the first example is limit of x times the quantity of 8x plus 4 as x approaches to 5 is equal to limit of x as x approaches to 5 times limit of the quantity 8x plus 4 as x approaches to 5. So, next one is 4 times the quantity of limit 8x as x approaches to 5 plus limit 4 limit 4 as x approaches to 5 <coughs> then 4 times 8 4 times the quantity of 8 times limit of x as x approaches to 5 plus 4 so the next one is 4 times the quantity 8 times x 8 times 5 plus 4 so the answer of that is 4 times 40 plus 4 and then the final answer is 176 mm. so our second example is limit of negative 5 over 2 x as x approaches to negative 2 so it, it is equal to negative 5 over 2 times the quantity of limit x as x approaches to negative 2 so negative 5 over 2 times negative 2 is equal to 10 over 2 so 10 over 2 div so 10 over 2 is also equal to 5 then our third example is limit of 2 times the quantity 3x plus 5 as x approaches to negative 2 so we have here limit of 2 as x approaches to negative 2 times limit of quantity 3x plus 5 as x approaches to negative 2 and 2 times the quantity of limit 3x as x approaches to negative 2 plus limit 5 as x approaches to negative 2 so we have here 2 times the times the quantity of 3 times limit of x as x approaches to negative 2 plus 5 and then 2 times 3 times the negative 2 plus 5 it is equal to 2 times negative 6 plus 5 and negative 6 plus 5 is equal to negative 1 so 2 times negative 1 is equal to negative 2 so this is our final is our final so we have here the six theorem so it is limit of the n power so if limit f of x as x approaches to a is equal to l and n is any positive integers then limit of quantity f of x to the power of n as x approaches to a is equal to l to the power of n so here are the examples so the first example is limit x raised to the power of 5 as x approaches to 2 is equal to 2 to the power of 5 so 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32 then the second one is limit x raised to the power of 3 as x approaches to 6 is equal to 6 raised to the power of 3 then the answer for this is 216 then the last one is limit of quantity 3x plus 1 raised to the power of 2 as x approaches to 3 is equal to the quantity of limit 3x as x approaches to 3 plus limit of 1 as x approaches to 3 to the power of 2 so the limit 3 of x as x approaches to 3 is equal to 3 times 3 then the limit of 1 as x approaches to 3 is equal to 1 so we have here the quantity of 3 times 3 plus 1 to the power of 2 so the answer is 9 plus 1 to the power of 2 then 10 to the power of 2 so the final answer is 100 the seventh limit theorem is limit of the quotient. So the formula is f limit f of x as x approaches to a is equal to l, and limit of g of x as x approaches to a 
is equal to m then limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches to a is equal to lim l over m f then m not equal to zero the first example is limit of x over negative 8x plus 1 is as x approaches to 4 is equal to limit of x as x approaches to 4 over limit of x in quantity of negative 8x plus 1 so 4 then over limit of negative 8x plus limit of 1 as x approaches to 4 then 4 over negative 32 x plus 1 then 4 minus oh, is 4 over negative 32 x plus 1 then 4 over negative 31 x then 4 over 31 x so the final answer is negative 4 over 31 x so the second example is limit of x is to the power of 3 minus 1 over 2 as x approaches to negative 2 so limit of x is to the power of 3 as x approaches to negative 2 limit of 1 as x approaches to negative 2 over limit of 2 as x approaches to negative 1 so is equal to negative 2 raised to the power of 3 minus 1 over 2 so is equal to negative 8 minus 1 over 2 so negative 7 over 2 so the final answer is negative 7 over 2 so the third example is limit of x raised to the power of 2 plus x minus 2 over 8 x raised to the power of 2 minus x as x approaches to 1 so you need to factor it so the factor is quantity of x minus 1 the quantity of 8 x plus 2 over x quantity of x minus 1 so cancel it so the remaining is x plus 2 over x so the limit of x plus 2 over x as x approaches to 1 then limit of x as x approaches to 1 my plus limit of 2 as x approaches to 1 over limit of x as x approaches to 1 then 1 plus 2 over 1 3 over 1 so the answer is 3 the rule number 1 of differentiation rules is constant rule the function of constant rule is the derivative of a constant is 0 for example f of x equals to 15 then f prime of x equals derivative over derivative of x 15 as the rule says, the derivative of a constant is 0. So, the derivative of 15 is equal to 0. So, the second example of the constant rule is f of x equals 8,625. Then, f prime of x equals derivative over derivative of x, 8,625. So, the derivative of 8,625 is equal to 0. So the third example of the constant rule is f of x equals 70. Then f prime of x equals derivative over derivative of x 70. So the derivative of 70 is equal to 0. Power rule. In calculus, the power rule is used to differentiate functions of the form. Whenever is a real number, since differentiation is a linear operation in the space of differentiable functions. Polynomials can also be differentiated using the rule. So our first example is f 
of h equals to h raised to the power of 6. So f prime of h equals derivative over derivative of h, h raised to the power of 6. And in order for us to get the deri derivative of h raised to the power of 6, is we need to follow the formula of the power rule. n times x raised to the power of n minus 1. So f prime of h equals to 6 times h raised to the power of 6 minus 1. So 6 times h is equals to 6h. 6 minus 1 is equals to 5. So our final answer is f prime of h equals to 6h raised to the power of 5. We have another examples. And our second example is f of x is equals to x raised to the power of 5 f f prime of x is equals to derivative over derivative of x x raised to the power of 5 and in order to us to get the derivative of x over raised to the power of 5 we need to follow the formula of the power power rule n times x raised to the power of n minus 1 f prime of x is equals to 5 times x raised to the power of 5 minus 1. So 5 times x is equals to 5x. And 5 minus 1 is equals to 4. So our final answer is f prime of x is equals to 5x raised to the power of 4. So our third example is f of g equals to g raised to the power of 3, f prime of g equals to derivative over deri derivative of g, g raised to the power of 3. And in order to us to get the derivative of g raised to the power of 3, so we need to follow the formula of the power rule. n times x raised to the power of n minus 1, f prime of g is it equals to 3 times g raised to the power of 3 minus 1. 3 times g is equals to 3g. So 3 minus 1 is equals to 2. So our final answer is f prime of g equals to 3g raised to the power of 2. The rule number three of differentiation rules is constant times function. If c is constant, then derivative over derivative of x times quantity c times f of x is equal to c times derivative over derivative of x f of x. First example is f of x is equal to 2x raised to the power of 2 f prime of x equal derivative over derivative of x 2x raised to the power of 2 in order to get the derivative of 2x raised to the power of 2 is you need to use the formula of constant times function f prime of x is equal to c times derivative over derivative of x f of x f prime of x is equal to 2 derivative over derivative of x x raised to the power of 2 f prime of x equal 2 times 2 x raised to the power of 2 minus 1 then 2 times 2 x is equal to 4 x 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 so the x, the x is had an imaginary one. The second example is f f of x equals seven x raised to the power of three. f prime of x equals 
Relative over the relative of x, 7x raised to the power of 3. In order, in order to get the derivative of 7x raised to the power of 3, is you need to use the, the formula of formula of constant times function f prime of x equals c times derivative over derivative x f of x f prime of x is equal to 7 derivative over derivative of x x raised to the power of 3 f prime of x is equal to 7 times 3x raised to the power of 3 minus 1 7 times 3x is equal to 21x 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 so the final answer if is f prime of x is equal to 21x raised to the power of 2 the third example is f of x equal 10x raised to the power of 4 f prime of x is equal derivative over derivative of x 10x raised to the power of 4 in order to get the derivative of 10x raised to the power of 4 is you need to use the formula of constant times function f prime of x is equal c times derivative of derivative of x f of x f prime of x is equal to 10 derivative over derivative of x x raised to the power of 4 f prime of x is equal 4 times 10x raised to the power of 4 minus 1 then 4 times 10x is 40x 4 minus 1 is 3 then the final answer is f prime of x equal 40x raised to the power of 3 The rule number 5 of differentiation rules is product rule. So given the functions h of x equals f of x times j of x, its derivative is given by h prime of x equals f of x times j prime of x plus j of x f prime of x or h prime of x equals u derivative of b plus v derivative of u. So our first example is h of x is equal to quantity of 4x plus 2 times quantity of 3x plus 2. In order for us to get the derivative of quantity of 4x plus 2 times quantity of 3x plus 2, we need to use the formula of product rule, which is h prime of x is equal to u times derivative of v plus v times derivative of u. u is equal to 4x plus 2 derivative of u is equal to 4. v is equal to 3x plus 2, derivative of v which is 3. So u is equal to 4x plus 2 times derivative of v which is 3 plus v which is 3x plus 2 times derivative of u which is 4. So multiply each term. 4x times 3 is equal to 12x. 2 times 3 is equal to 6 plus 3x times 4 is equal to 12x. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So combine like terms. 12x plus 12x is equal to 24x plus 6 plus 8 is equal to 14. So our final answer is h prime of x is equal to 24x plus 14. So our second example is f of x is equal to quantity of 6x is to the power of 2 plus 4x times quantity of 3x plus 2. In order for us to get the derivative of quantity of 6x raised to the power of 2 plus 4x times quantity of 3x plus 2, we need to use the formula of product rule, which is h prime of x is equal to u times derivative of v plus v times derivative of u. So our u is equal to 6x raised to the power of 2 plus 4x. Derivative of u is equal to 12x plus 4. v is equal to 3x plus 2. Derivative of v is equal to 3. So u is equal to 6x raised to the power of 2 plus 4x times derivative of v which is 3 plus v which is 3x plus 2 
times derivative u which is 12x plus 4. So multiply each term. So 6x raised to the power of 2 times 3 is equal to 18x raised to the power of 2. 4x times 3 is equal to 12x. So 3x times 12x is equal to 36x squared. So 3x times 4 is equal to 12x. So 2 times 12x is equal to 24x. So 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So combine like terms. So 18x squared plus 36x squared is equal to 54x squared. So 12x plus 12x is equal to 24x plus 24x is equal to 48x plus 8. Our final answer is f prime of x is equal to 54x raised to the power of 2 plus 48x plus 8. Our third example is g of x is equal to quantity of 5x raised to the power of 3 minus 2x times quantity of 2x raised to the power of 2 minus x. In order for us to get the derivative of quantity of 5x raised to the power of 3 minus 2x times 2x raised to the power of 2 minus x, we need to use the formula of product rule which is h prime of x is equal to u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. So our u is equal to 5x raised to the power of 3 minus 2x. Derivative of u which is 15x raised to the power of 2 minus 2. v is equal to 2x raised to the power of 2 minus x. Derivative of v is, is equal to 4x minus 1. So u is equal to 5x raised to the power of 3 minus 2x. Derivative of v is equal to 4x minus 1 plus v which is 2x raised to the power of 2 minus x. Derivative of u which is 15x raised to the power of 2 minus 2. So multiply each term. So 5x raised to the power of 3 times 4x is equal to 20x raised to the power of 4. So 5x raised to the power of 3 times 1 is equal to negative 5x raised to the power of 3. So, negative 2x times 4x is equal to negative 8x raised to the power of 2. Negative 2x times negative, two, negative 1 is equal to positive 2x. So, 2x raised to the power of 2 times 15x raised to the power of 2 is equal to 30x raised to the power of 2. I say 30x raised to the power of 4. So, 2x raised to the power of 2 times negative 2 is equal to negative 4x raised to the power of 2. So, negative x times positive 15x raised to the power of 2 is equal to negative 15x raised to the power of 3. So, negative x times negative 2 is equal to positive 2x. So, combine like terms. So, 20x raised to the power of 2 plus 30x raised to the power of 4. Let's simply... <laughs> so, 20x raised to the power of 4 plus 30x raised to the power of 4 is equal to 50x raised to the power of 4. So, negative 5x raised to the power of 3 plus negative 15x raised to the power of 3 is equal to negative 20x raised to the power of 3. So, after that, negative 8x raised to the power of 2 plus negative 4x raised to the power of 2 is equal to 12x raised to the power of 2. 2x plus 2x is equal to 4x. So our final answer is g of x is equal to 50x raised to the power of 4 minus 20x raised to the power of 3 minus 12x raised to the power of 2 plus 4x. Rule number 5 of differentiation rules is quotient rule. If two functions f of x and g of x are differentiable then the quotient is differentiable and f over g prime equals f prime of g minus f g prime over g squared or h prime of x equals v derivative of u minus u derivative of v over v squared so our first example is f of x is equals to 5x squared plus 3x over 2x minus 5. So, 
So, in order to get the derivative of this is we will use the formula of the quotient rule which is h prime of x is equals to v times derivative of u minus u times derivative of v over v squared. So, our v is 2x minus 5 then the derivative of u is 10x plus 2 our u is 5x squared plus 2x and our derivative of v is 2 so f prime of x is equals to v which is 2x minus 5 times derivative of u which is 10x plus 2 minus u is equals to 5x squared plus 2x times derivative of v which is 2 over v squared which is 2x minus 5 squared so we will multiply each term so 2x times 10x is equals to 2x squared and 2x times 2 is equals to 4x then negative 5 times 10x is equals to negative 50x then negative 5 times 2 is equals to 10 then negative 5 x squared times 2 is equals to negative 10 x squared 2x times 2 is equals to negative 4x copy the denominator which is 2x minus 5 squared then after is we will cancel unlike terms which is 2x squared minus 10x squared is equals to 10x squared then 4x minus 50x minus 4x is equals to negative 50x and copy the 10 and copy the denominator which is quantity of 2x minus 5 squared so this is our final answer f prime of x is equals to 10x squared minus 50x minus 10 over 2x minus 5 squared so example number 2 so our example number 2 is function of x is equals to 2x plus 3 over 3x minus 5 so in order to get the derivative of this is we will use the formula of quotient rule which is h prime of x is equals to v times derivative of u minus u times derivative of v over v squared so our u is 2x plus 3 and our derivative of u is 2 our v is 3x minus 5 and our derivative of v is 3 so f prime of s x is equals to v which is 3x minus 5 times derivative of u which is 2 minus u which is 2x plus 3 times derivative of v which is 3 over v squared squared which is 3x minus 5 squared so we will multiply each term so 3x times 2 is equals to 6x and negative 5 times 2 is equals to negative 10 then negative 2 times 3 is equals to negative 2x times 3 is equals to negative 6x then negative 3 times 3 is equals to negative 9 then copy the denominator which is 3x minus 5 squared so we will cancel unlike terms so 6x and negative 6x then negative 10 minus 9 is equals to negative So, our final answer is f prime of x is equals to negative 19 over 3x minus 5 squared. So, our third example is f of x 
is equals to 4x plus 2 over 5x plus 3. So, in order to get the derivative of this is we'll use the formula of quotient rule which is h prime of x is equals to v times derivative of u minus u times derivative of v over v squared. So, our u is 4x plus 2 and our derivative of u is 4. Our v is 5x plus 3 and our derivative of v is 5. So, f prime of x is equals to v which is 5x plus 3 times derivative of u which is 4 and u times u which is 4x plus 2 times derivative of u I th derivative of v which is 5 over v squared which is 5x plus 3 squared so we will multiply each term so 5x times 4 is equals to 20x and 3 times 4 is equals to 12 negative 4x times 5 is equals to negative 20x and negative 2 times 5 is equals to negative 10 copy the denominator denominator which is 5x plus 3 squared so we will cancel unlike terms so 20x minus negative minus 20x is equals to 0 12 minus 10 is equals to 2 so our final answer is function of x is equals to 2 over 5x plus 3 squared. Chain rule. Suppose that the given function f of x and g of x and they are both differentiable. If we define the function as f of x equals f circle of g times x then the derivative of the function f of x is f of x equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x so this is the formula of chain rule our first example of chain rule is f equals 4x plus 2 squared to get the answer of this given we need to use the formula of chain rule which is f prime of x equals f prime g of x times g prime of x so our f prime of g of x is 2 times quantity of 4x plus 2 raised to the power of 2 minus 1 and our value of g prime of x is derivative of 4x plus 2. So 2 times 4x plus 2 raised to the power of 2 minus 1 is 2 quantity of 4x plus 2. And the derivative of 4x plus 2 is 4. So we need to times this. So 2 times 4 equals 8. So the final answer is 8 quantity of 4x plus 2. Our second example is f equals quantity of 3x squared plus 3 raised to the power of 7. So to get the answer of this given, we need to use the formula of chain rule, which is f prime of x equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So our f prime of g of x is 7 3x quantity of 3x squared plus 3 raised to the power of 7 minus 1. And our g prime of x equals the, to the, and the derivative of 3x squared plus 3 so 7 quantity times quantity of 3x squared plus 3 si raised to the power of 7 minus 1 is equal to 7 quantity of 3x squared plus 3 raised to the power of 6 and the der derivative of 3x pl squared plus 3 is 6x so we need to multiply this so 7 times 6x equals 42x quantity of 3x squared plus 3 so this is the final answer our third example is f equals quantity of 9x cubed minus 2x raised to the power of 5 in order to get the answer of this given we need to use the formula of chain rule which is f prime of x equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x so our f prime of g of x is 5 quantity of 9x cubed minus 2x 
reserve power of 5 minus 1. And our g prime of x is derivative of 9x u minus 2x. So 5 times quantity of 9x u minus 2x raised to the power of 5 minus 1 is 5 quantity of 9x cubed minus 2x raised to the power of 4 and our derivative of 9x cubed minus 2x is 27x squared minus 2 so next is multiply this so 5 times 27x squared is 135x squared and 5 times 2 equals 10 and copy this so this is the final answer Trigonometric identities are equation that true for right angle triangle or an equation which is true for all values of its variables. Trigonometric identities. First is reciprocal identities. So the example of reciprocal identities is sine theta is equal to one over cosecant theta. Cosecant theta is equal to one over sine theta. And cosine theta is equal to one over secant theta. And second theta is equal to 1 over cosine theta. And tan theta is equal to 1 over cot theta. And cot theta is equal to 1 over tan theta. And the second one is quotient identities. The example of quotient identities is tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. And cot theta is equal to cosine theta over sine theta. Our third trigonometric identities is sum and difference identities. We have sine quantity of a plus or minus b is equal to sine a times cosine b plus or minus cosine a times sine b. Then we have cosine quantity of a plus or minus b is equal to cosine a times cosine b plus or minus sine a times sine b. Then we have tangent quantity of a plus or minus b is equal to tangent a plus or minus tangent b over 1 minus or plus tangent a times tangent b. Then last, we have cotangent quantity of a plus or minus b is equal to cotangent a times cotangent b minus or plus 1 over cotangent b plus or minus cotangent a. Trigonometric identities. We have here our fourth identities is add and even. So sine quantity of negative theta is equal to negative sine theta. Next, cosine quantity of negative theta is equal to positive cosine theta. Then tangent quantity of negative theta is equal to negative tangent theta. Our fifth identities is Pythagorean. We have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to second squared theta. Thus, we have 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Trigonometric identities. We have, there are six identities, is double angle identities. We have sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta times cosine theta. Then, Cosine 2 theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Then cosine 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Then we have cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 times sine squared theta. We have tangent 2 theta is equal to 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. Then our 7 identities is half angle. We have sine theta over 2 is equals to square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2. Next is cosine theta over 2 is equals to square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. Next is tangent theta over 2 is equals to sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. Last, we have tangent theta is over 2 is equals to 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta. We have our next identity is we have sum two product identities. We have here 
sin a plus sin b is equals to 2 sin quantity of a plus b over 2 times cosine quantity of a minus b over 2. Next, if we have sin a minus sin b is equals to 2 cosine quantity of a plus b over 2 times sine quantity of a minus b over 2. Next, if we have cosine a plus cosine b is equals to 2 cosine quantity of a plus b over 2 times cosine quantity of a minus b over 2. So last, if we have cosine a minus cosine b is equals to negative 2 sine quantity of a plus b over 2 times sine quantity of a minus b over 2. We have our last identities. Identities is we have we have a product to some identity. So we have sine A times sine B is equals to one half quantity of cosine quantity of A minus B minus cosine quantity of A plus B. Next is we have cosine A times cosine B is equals to one half quantity of cosine quantity of A minus B plus cosine quantity of A plus B. Next, we have sine A times cosine B is equals to one half quantity of sine quantity of A plus B plus sine quantity of A minus B. Last is we have cosine A times sine B is equals to one half quantity of sine quantity of A plus B minus sine quantity of A minus B. We have here the derivatives of trigonometric function. So we have here the derivative of sin x is equals to cosine x. Then the derivative of cosine x is equals to negative sine x. Then the derivative of tan x is equals to secant squared x. The derivative of cotangent x is equals to negative cosecant squared x. The derivative of secant x is equals to secant x tan tangent x. Then the derivative of cosecant x is equals to negative cosecant x cotangent x. So, we have the first example of trigonometric. We have the function of y is equals to x cosine x plus sine x. So, we are going to get the derivative of this, cosine x and sine x. So, we have y prime is equals to d, quantity of x, cosine x plus d, sine x. So, now we have x derivative of cosine x plus cosine x the derivative of x plus derivative of sine x so the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x then the derivative of x is 1 then the derivative of sine x is cosine x so now we have y prime is equals to x times negative sine x plus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x so x times negative sine x is equals to negative x sine x plus cosine x plus cosine x. So we are going to add this both cosine x. So now we have the final answer of y prime is equals to negative x sine x plus 2 cosine x. So the second example is h of x is equal to sine x over cosine x. In this part, we need to use the quotient rule which is how the formula which is v times derivative of u minus u times derivative of v over v squared. The value of v is equal to sine x. Derivative of v is equal to cosine x. u is equal to cosine x. The derivative of u is equal to negative sine x. So, the, the v is equal to sine x times derivative of u which is negative sine x minus u which is cosine x times derivative of v which is cosine x. And after that, sin x times negative sin x is equal to negative sin x squared x. So, cosin x times cosin x is equal to cosine cosine squared x. Copy the denominator, which is sin x squared. So, in the value of identities, which is sin, negative sin x squared minus cosin x squared is equal to negative 1. So, our final answer is h prime of x is equal to negative 1 over sine x squared.
So the third example is f of x is equal to 1 plus cosine x over sine x. So in this part, we will use the quotient rule that has a formula which is v times derivative of u minus u times derivative of v over v squared. So the value of v is equal to sine x derivative of v which is cosine x. u is equal to 1 plus cosine x derivative of u which is negative sine x. So v is equal to sine x derivative of u is equal to negative sine x minus u which is 1 plus cosine x derivative of v which is cosine x over sine x squared. After that, multiply each term. Sine x times negative sine x is, e is equal to negative sine squared x minus 1 times cosine x is equal to cosine x times negative is equal to negative cosine x. Cosine x times cosine x is equal to cosine squared x times negative is equal to negative cosine squared x over copy the denominator which is sine x squared. After that, factor it. So negative cosine x over sine x minus negative sine squared x minus cos squared x over sine x. So negative cosine x over sine x minus 1 which is cosine x and sine x squared is have 1. So negative 1 over sine x or negative cosine cosecant x. So the final answer is f prime of x is equal to cosine x minus 1 over sine x or negative cosecant x. Higher order derivatives. This differentiation process can be continued to find the third, fourth, and successive derivatives of f of x. Higher order derivatives is f of x is equal to 2x raised to the power 4 plus 2x raised to the power 2. So we will find the fourth derivatives of x. The first derivatives is 2 times 4 is equal to 8. 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. So 8x raised to the power 3. So 2 times 2 is equal to 4. 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So x. So the second derivatives is 8 times 3 is equal to 24. So 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So 24x raised to the power of 2. 4 times 1 is equal to 4. 1 times 1 is equal to 0. So 4. So the third derivative is 24 times 2 is equal to 48. 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So x. So constant will become 0. So 48x. So the fourth derivative is 48 times 1 is equal to 48. 1 times 1 is equal to 0. So 48. So the fourth derivative is, is equal to 48. So the second example of higher, higher order derivatives is f of x is equal to 2x raised to the power of 6 minus 3x raised to the power of 3. So we will find the third derivative of x. So the first derivative is 2 times 6 is equal to 12 minus 1 is equal to 5. So 12x raised to the power of 5. So 3 times 3 is equal to 9. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So negative 9x raised to the power of 2. So the second derivative is 12 times 5 is equal to 60. 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. So 60x raised to the power of 4. So 9 times 2 is equal to 18. 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So negative 18x. So the third derivative is 60 times 4 is equal to 240. 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. So 240x raised to the power of 3. So 18 times 1 is equal to 18. So 1 times 1 is equal to 0. So 18. So the third derivative is f third derivative is 240x raised to the power of 3 minus 18. Application of derivatives identifies that this concept is used in everyday life such as determining concavity, curve, sketching, and optimization. The example of application derivatives the displacement in centimeter of a particle moving in a straight line is given by the equation at motion. Sigma equals 10 R raised to the power of 4 plus 3 plus 8 where R is measured in seconds. So, the first question of the given problem is 
find the velocity. So the velocity is the derivatives of the given equation. This is the equation is 10 r raised to the power 4 plus 3 r plus 8. So the derivatives of 10 times 4 is equal to 40. 3 of 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. So 3 times 1 is equal to 3. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So the the velocity the velocity is, is equal to sigma prime is equal to 40 r raised to the power of 3 plus 3. So the second question is find the acceleration. The acceleration is the derivative of the first derivatives. So the first derivative is 40 r raised to the power of 3 plus 3. So 40 times 3 is equal to 4, 120. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. If this 3 is its constant, so it will become 0. So the, the acceleration is sigma second prime or second derivatives is equal to 120 r raised to the power of 2. So the second example of application of derivatives is find two numbers whose sum is 90 and whose product is a maximum. First, we're going to get it is the sum. So sum is equal to x plus y. So 90 is equal to x plus y. Then 90 minus x is equal to y. Then the second thing is we get the, the product, which is x times y. So product is equal to x, the value of y, 90 minus x then x times 90 is equal, is equal to 90x x times x is equal to negative x squared so we're go going to get the derivatives so the derivatives of 90x minus x raised to the power of 2 is equal to 90 minus 2x and then we get going to get the value of x so 90 minus 2x is equal to 0 so 90 is equal to 2x so divide both sides into 2 cancel it out so the remaining is x divide that 90 to 2 is equal to 45 so our x is equal to 45 then we're going to get the value of y y is equal to 90 minus x then 90 the value of x is 45 so 90 minus 45 so our y is equal to 45 so our third example the application of the derivative is find that two numbers whose so sum is 120 and whose product is a maximum so first we're going to get the sum so sum is equal to x plus y so the maximum is 120 so 120 is equal to x plus y. So 120 minus x is equal to y. So y is equal to 120 minus x. After that, we're going to get the product. Which is product is x times y. So product is equal to x and the value of y, 120 minus x. After that, multiply x times 120 is equal to 120x so x times negative x is equal to negative x squared after that we're going to get the derivatives so the derivatives is 120 minus 2x and after that we're going to get the value of x so using this 120 minus 2x is equal to 0 so 120 is equal to 2x so it will become a positive so divide both sides into two so cancel it out the remaining is x then 120 divided by, divide by 2 is equal to 60 so our x is equal to 60 and after that we're going to get the value of y using this then y is equal to 120 minus x then the value of x is equal to 60 so y is equal to 120 minus 60 then we can conclude that the value of y is equal to 60 the final answer is 60
Hi guys, hope you enjoy our video and learn some techniques about PC calculus. So, don't forget to click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell below for more updates. And thank you!